Hi, my name is Akin Akinshiku. I'm the creative director. I work in Kids Media and I'm also a writer and co-creator of Apple Treehouse. My name is Maria Timofeo. I'm a children's content creator and I'm one of the creators of CBB's drama, Apple Treehouse. We've all heard about diversity and inclusivity and today we're going to talk about how you can achieve that in an authentic way within your work in children's media. So many terms get bandied around that you have diversity, representation, BAME, people of colour. Um, some of these terms are used interchangeably but they all mean different things to different people and um, at different times. BAME as we know means Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic. But BAME is not the only diversity, there are other diversities. So there's diversity in terms of region, so you know people from Wales and Scotland, up north, further south. Uh, you have class diversity, working class, middle class, upper class. You have sexuality and it's diversity also. You have age and not many people talk about the diversity of age. And then of course you have gender. On the other hand, inclusivity is the practice of including people who might otherwise be excluded. In some ways it's the implementation of diversity. Diversity is the who or what and inclusivity, inclusivity is the mindset. So for the purpose of this talk, we will mostly use the word diversity as a shorthand for both inclusivity and diversity. So can you imagine if from the time you were born, you didn't see any representation of yourself on screen or in the media, in advertising, no versions of you or any of your family or community that is familiar to you, what would that do to you as a young child? As children's content creators, we need to provide opportunities for children to see versions of themselves, their families, their communities on screen. And we also need to provide opportunities for other kids to learn about diverse cultures, whatever that is. Effectively, there are two sides to how we need to be thinking about screen diversity. The audience you're representing and then the audience that you are informing. Failure to do this can indirectly contribute to unconscious bias, which we will touch on later on. Diversity isn't just about what's in front of the camera. It's also about who is behind the camera or who's working behind the camera. We need all these different voices and experiences and personalities to create something that you'd describe as authentic. Diversity shouldn't be about only creating BAME-specific shows or BAME-specific characters for BAME actors or performers. Uh, BAME actors and performers are like any actor or performer. They can perform any kind of role in any kind of film. There's no reason why a BAME actor should not be able to play, let's say, for example, Shakespeare. Uh, sometimes a BAME artist is only called in when there's a specific need for a BAME, a BAME kind of role. Diversity shouldn't be about tokenism. It shouldn't be about placing an ethnic person in a TV drama to tick a box or just making sure that there's some kind of black or Asian person in the background and there you go, we've done our diverse bit. It's about authentically creating characters, creating storylines that people can relate to. I remember once I was working for this organisation and um, I was asked to make a promotional campaign and one of the policies they had was when you're making a promotional campaign you have to have a BAME person in a promotional campaign. Um, going through this particular show they wanted to promote, there was no BAME character in it. The only BAME character they had in the show was like a bartend, bartender. So I ended up cutting a trailer 30 seconds, long, 30 seconds long with one shot of a black character in the background serving a drink. And to me, that was kind of counterproductive. It kind of missed the whole point of this BAME or this inclusion or representation on the old diversity thing. So, what is the business case for diversity? The McKinsey Report and McGregor Review found that companies that are more ethnically diverse outperform those that aren't by 33%. 33%, that's, that's evidence that more diversity is more productive. In 2011, the BAME population was worth £300 billion, a large audience you're missing out on as a purchasing power. So in a nutshell, as a business, why would you only want to appeal to one small section 
of society instead of the whole of society doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to tap into only a section of the talent and resource instead of the whole of the talent and the resource of the country? It doesn't make business sense. So now we're going to look at how diversity and inclusion were the core elements used in creating our BAFTA-nominated show, Apple Tree House. I guess the world's always been quite diverse. I grew up in the East End of London in the 70s and my dad had a calf and during the school holidays I'd go there and sit in the window and just watch the world go by and the East End back then was quite, well it still is, but back then even more diverse. There were all sorts of people from all walks of life and we were a Greek Cypriot family and um, I didn't have a nanny um, in the school holidays so I'd just sit in the window and draw and just see all these people from all walks of life walking past, you know, homeless people, um, and opera singers, because there was like a, a place where they would rehearse nearby. So I've always grown up with that diversity in my life, that mixture of different people. And I noticed in my work as, as a kids media creator that a lot of kids content wasn't very diverse. There were all these amazing shows, but a lot of them were very middle class or they were rural particularly with preschool particularly with preschool so i've got two kids and back in the day they were when they were preschoolers they consumed a lot of stuff uh, media and television and books and uh, magazines and i noticed that the what they were consuming didn't really represent or didn't mirror some of the experiences that we had in terms of in terms of setting and we kind of felt that it would be great to take some of the idealism that you had in these lovely preschool media and material and inject some of that into our urban reality. Because as kids growing up in an urban reality, you, there are things about our lives that are amazing and magical and wonderful. And that's never really, really shown that narrative of the urban young experience being lovely and beautiful and magical was never really shown. So our show was rooted in reality, inspired by it, but a kind of maybe slightly more idyllic version of reality, perhaps you could say. So we wanted to create a show with a variety of characters, not just different ethnicities, but different jobs, different characters, um, and intergenerational relationships. For example, our main character, Marley, He's a seven-year-old boy. He had a very close relationship with his grandma. We felt it was important to create characters that were real, but also avoided stereotypes. So, for example, we had working-class dads with jobs that also got involved in childcare. We had a traditional grandma, Muslim grandma, that was very much a homemaker, but she was also interested in science and a lot of the stuff that her grandson was interested in. This is really important because the issue of screen representation and stereotypes is connected to unconscious bias. And this can underpin a lot of our decision making as grown ups. Research shows that this process happens much earlier than we think. From around about the age of five, this relates back to the two sided projection of diversity we spoke about earlier. On the one hand, it's the audience you're representing. On the other hand, it's the audience that you're informing. So it's, it's, it's really important from the early age to experience and empathise with people from other cultures as fully capable human beings. So the process of diversity starts even before you, you cast anybody. It starts behind the scenes. Um, and unless you've got diversity behind the scenes, you don't really have authentic diversity. And we have a lot of contacts in the industry, but we didn't just want to work with people we knew unless they were right for the production and could add insight or add value. Um, so we cast our net wide. We found people from all walks of life and different groups of people that we hadn't worked with before and started developing relationships, talking to people. There were lots of meetings and coffees and talks and... 
and just getting to know people outside of our everyday kind of network. We met with a lot of young writers who we felt had potential, but you know, they were really interesting people with interesting stories, but they didn't have a lot of experience. So we teamed them up with more experienced writers and they worked on developing stories together, which uh, worked out quite well. So there were production crew we met with who were more than capable of doing the work, but hadn't been given opportunities before. So we found opportunities for them to work with us. For example, there was one point where we had an entire second unit crew staffed by women um, and our DOP was a fantastic BAME DOP who'd done loads of work within kids TV and broadcast but hadn't ever been given an entire series to work on. Try and meet new people and expand your list of contacts. Try and build relationships with people over time so that you're not just looking for people when you urgently need them. Effectively what you want to do is like build an ecosystem and a network of different people that know people that know people so that eventually at some point in time when you do need to tap into resources there are people there that you can actually call, you can pick up a phone, you can call them. So when you take on less experienced talent there is a selective risk in going through that process. So. As a company, as a production company, you have to mitigate for that risk. But it is a risk that you have to take and it's worth taking that risk. Communicate to your team why diversity is important. Get them on board, take them along with you. Without your team buying into it, it's difficult to make authentic inclusivity and diversity work. And remember, diversity is not just about colour, it's about representing people across class, gender, disability, different economic groups, religious beliefs although not necessarily all at the same time. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for having us. Good luck and goodbye.